Hello, Bay Ridge. Welcome to another edition of After Hours. This Sunday, we're going to be beginning a series on the five solas of the Reformation. Uh, the solas were the sayings that lied at the heart of what was going on at the Reformation. And this is part of uh, celebrating the 500th anniversary of the Reformation on October the 31st, 1517. Martin Luther nailed the 95 Theses to the Wittenberg door. He's not intending to start a Reformation, but that, in fact, is what has happened. So we're going to be looking at that for each of the five Sundays during October. But many people might ask, why are we looking at something that's from 500 years ago? Aren't there more important things? But I think it's really critical for us to take this time to reflect on it for three reasons. Number one, it is the 500th anniversary of one of the most important events in the history of the church and of our culture. Uh, the Reformation altered almost everything in the church. Prior to the beginning of the Reformation, the Bible was only in Latin in the Western church. The average person could not read it. So when you read the Bible in English today, that is a direct result of the Reformation. Uh, the power of the Pope, and the Pope still exercises obviously great influence today, but his power was unrivaled heading into the time of the Reformation. And it was not only a power in the church, but it was actually a secular a ruling power. And he had armies that marched with him. A lot of that came to change because of the Reformation. And finally, uh, the relationship between the church and the state was ultimately altered because of the Re Reformation. And so all of this has had huge effect on the way you and I think about and even practice our faith today. Also, it's massively shaped our modern culture, our notions of freedom, uh, the way we uh, view family and work. All of this was affected by the Reformation. So it's a really important event. But secondly, and even more importantly, the five solas lie at the heart of our faith. They are not some secondary issue. Now, it's important to understand as we talk about this, because some people would want to use this as a time to try and bash Roman Catholics. And Roman Catholics are our neighbors, and we have many, many things that we share in common. Roman Catholics and Protestants agree on the Trinity, the deity of Christ, uh, the nature of God, creation, the fall, the fact that Jesus died to open a way for sinful human beings to come back to God. All of that are things with which we have great agreement. However, there are big differences as well. And the five solas uh, really deal with that, particularly the differences over uh, what is the nature of our authority? Where, where does authority derive from? Does it come from the scripture as the word of God and scripture alone? Or does it come from scripture and also really ultimately the church and the church's tradition? Which of those is really our ultimate authority? It's a huge question because it determines then what it is we believe and what we practice. And secondly, the other four solas, besides Sola Scriptura, really deal with the nature of how are we made right with God? How do we come to know God? How is a man justified before God? And that's where we get into Sola Gratia, uh, grace alone, Christ alone, faith alone, and all of it looking towards the glory of God alone. So it's really at the heart of the faith. Thirdly, these questions are absolutely critical today. They're not reserved to just 500 years ago. In fact, we're going to spend time looking at some modern surveys and some modern trends that within our culture and within the church, if anything, the situation is actually worse today than it was 500 years ago. There are many conflicting confusing and downright harmful and wrong answers related to questions of, well, what is the nature of authority? Where do we derive our beliefs and our practice from? How is a person made right before God? What is the central message of scripture? All of these questions are actually probably in a worse state today than they were 500 years ago. So it's critical for us to go back and examine these issues, scripture alone, grace alone, Christ alone, faith alone, all for the glory of God alone. So I hope you're going to be coming to us and joining with us. It's a great time again to bring friends as they can understand the heart of the faith and what it means to be a Christian. I also want to remind us that this weekend, we've got our evening of praise and prayer coming up on Friday night from 7 to 8.30. Be right down at the main building. We'll be spending time both in worship and in prayer for our congregation, for our community, for this world. 
uh, and we have child care available. I encourage everyone, if you can make it, please be here. Secondly, we'll also have a work party on Saturday for those. I know a lot of the ladies are going to be off at a ladies function, but for everyone else who's here, we need all the help we can get so we can begin working on the painting and work in the new lobby area to bring to completion what's going on in our construction. So I hope you have a great week, and I look forward to seeing everybody this weekend. God bless.